Welcome, everyone, to another Global Comic Safari. Today, we're going to do a pickup show because, well, we're a little too disorganized to get uh, a set build done, hopefully next week. Um, but uh, today, we've got uh, a crew for pickups. I got Scott Mack. Of course, Robert Fordham is joining us. Josh, the that horror guy. And Matt, who uh, has joined us again from his uh, busy, busy month to uh, show off some books. So welcome, everybody. I just want to thank again uh, CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, for all the great support. Um, you can check out Matt's articles on there uh, and occasionally when I do something there, but uh, all of podcasts are linked there. Lots of great content, lots of great um, investing and speculation news. So check them out. And I do want to kind of uh, talk about our friends at Comic Barricade. They have an IG contest going on for a free set of Comic Barricades at a $25 eBay card. So follow them at Comic Barricade. Um, they're also available at comicbarricade.com. So the winner will get $25 by uh, following them and uh, sharing a post. Uh, so check it out. And if you're not familiar with that product, I've got a one right here to show you. So hold on. Um, it is a cool, very, very thin, very heavy-duty piece of plastic with some uh, pins in it that you put into the box and just kind of lock into place. So it's great if you're kind of organizing your sets or organizing your different countries or your different runs or whatever you're doing, as well as adding stability to the box and uh, protecting those books from the dreaded spine crease when they fall over. So check them out and uh, enter the contest. Share away. Cool. Great. All right. I'm going to let... Uh, Scott, start today. Uh oh, Mac Daddy. What do you got, Mac for? Daddy? I can never remember what books I've shown you guys, so I don't know. Have you, have you seen this one yet? I do not believe so. I do think you showed it in the post. Oh, I may have posted it online. Yes, that's a beauty. This is the Brazilian Golden Age. It's basically what they call Year One. It's got the can Marvel. You lift it up a little further to show oh. the bottom. Oh yeah. With that crazy gas mask? That is a panel from oh. Smash Comics, the espionage story in Smash Comics. And then they've got the dueling scene between Torch and Submariner from the classic battle, uh, Marvel Mystery number nine. So what's actually in there? It's Well, these, these early issues have um, Marvel Mystery comic content, so you've got the Human Torch, Submariner, and the Kazar stories. And then you've got Smash Comics. And then you've got other stuff that I'm really not that familiar with. Okay. So is it the actual Marvel Mystery 9 in there? Yes, it is. And it's actually got three stories from Marvel Mystery number 9. Awesome. So um, probably the only way I could afford that. Uh, one thing I will say is when you were buying – when I first saw this book online um, – I said I put my name in the hat if ever another copy came up. And I guess for some reason or another, the deal on this one fell through, so I ended up getting it. So wow. Nice. Although that story is, you know, speak up and stand in line. Yeah, because you never know. You never know. I, I honestly didn't think I would get to own that book. Uh, it's extremely rare. Um, our friend Kazi, I think he's got – he, he may only have one copy of that, and sometimes he has two of those year one because that was from December of 1940. And the issue, the issue before this, um, the horror guy has. So, oh, yeah, of course, it's he a does. nice one. You guys, you guys are buying up Brazil. <laughs> the, the continuity, yeah, are... it's the continuity of that, the release of those early Gibi Mensiles. It's like the last eight. Eight or nine issues. Yeah. Finally covers. All right. Beautiful. Robert, what do you got for us? All right. I'm gonna change my order a little bit since we're in Brazil. I'm gonna <laughs> show this. I'm gonna show this beauty right here. Oh yeah, that was a nice one that went through here. Wow. Nice you know, 
<laughs> Except for the Spider Man label. Yeah, you know. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, CGC. You know? Fucking CGC. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> let's, not, let's not lose sight of the nine two. Yeah, nine yeah. It's yeah. Just, I mean I it it shipped through me because I came out of the jungles of Brazil and through Pack Mule and all that stuff and I looked at it and I was like, Holy cow, that's a nice looking copy. Yeah, so. you don't often see e balls hit into those into those higher numbers like that. They're, eh, it's when you do, it's something special. Yeah, you've put together quite a Look set. Look at there. that! That's beautiful, man. It's awesome, including yeah, the, the flipped Aussie. How how neat is it? The Aussies flipped it. Yeah, I, I like that. It. Oh, reverse! I just saw. Yeah, that. the Aussies flipped it for some reason, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I like about this one is is that on the guts, the rest of these are in black and white. But for this one, the M and chorus, M chorus, color, and they got a little bit of the comic on the back, which I love. Oh, wow, no, oh, that's mm. awesome. Yeah, it's a neat e ball, dude. That's a great score, Robert. I didn't you look know? at the back. I think yeah, I was too yeah. nervous because it came out of like a plastic bag, and I'm like, I got to get this into mylar so fast, I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But one thing I can say is that a lot of the guys I posted this in Global Global Comico, and they um, and they said that it's very hard to get a nine two in anything e balls. But oh, yeah, talking dude. talking to Kazi, he said that a lot of these. He said, "How much did I pay for this?" And I was like, "I'm not going to disclose that right now." But he was saying that he only had one in his entire collection, and as big as massive his collection is he only had one so yeah. he was like wow. consider yourself consider yourself blessed my friend and i was like yeah I'm, <laughs> yeah that's nice crazy guy. congratulations sir yeah <clears throat> all right let's move to the uh that horror guy and see what that he horror fiend. yeah i know i should i feel like i should have picked a different name because this first <laughs> book is not horror related at all <laughs> no but it's Crazy Your attention. Time. Yeah, so we're gonna go with this. Oh shit! So yeah. that's, where's that from? Uh, this is from China. Chinese Chinese yeah, so you got you know Hawkman down there, and then you got Hawk Girl up in the corner, and then two other random Hawk guys. Um, the closest thing I I know nothing about this book, like nothing. There's no indica. There's no date. There's there's no nothing. So the closest thing I can compare it to is, you know, the Justice League of America number six from sixty one. Yeah, yeah. I'm flashing that right now. But yeah, it's got the it's wheel on six. it. Six. I said eight when I talked to you. I, I meant six. Yeah. yeah, but it's a complete redraw. I mean, there's different yeah, points, but it's, it's still enough of it. Yeah. yeah. Where did Justin come from? <laughs> I thought it was the Batman one that with the Batwoman on it, but you're right. This is closer. Yep. Yeah, and then the interior stories, as far as I know, it's all original. I sent I sent some screenshots of that too, but oh, I didn't get them. But man, there's yeah. like there's a hawk signal in there drawing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is nuts. Yeah, it's just bootleg. It's got, Josh, like, can... that, it's got Josh... like the knockoff Laprenza line up there. Like, <laughs> oh god, oh, it's yeah. like, this is Look one of that. the most bootleg things I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a fake ID. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, hopefully one day I can you know find something out about it, but I literally know nothing. Josh, I'm I'm ninety percent sure that is a Hong Kong bootleg. Mm -hmm. um, now the actual dates of when those were produced, I bet you that Norman Scott would probably have a better grasp on it. Um, but I'm thinking I'm thinking seventies, possibly yeah. early eighties. But I'm. 90% sure that is a Hong Kong bootleg. Uh, I've seen a few more of those pop up. Um, they don't seem to pop up as much as, you know, you know, that's what, how, how do you say it, Scott? Is Len Ha? I forget how you say it, but the Chinese, a lot of the Chinese comics that are like that funky little square, they're called Len Wah, Lin Waha. I don't remember how exactly to say it, but those are uh, kind of a traditional comic format, and a lot of the bootlegs got done in it, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a piece of comic bootleg history. That's for damn sure. Yeah, yeah, we talked about bootlegs in the in the Indo show with Joey, and yeah, that's that's actually maybe crazier than some of the stuff. He <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful, and, and 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 who can and who can fault the the Chinese uh, characters? I mean, they're just awesome. 
All right, we're gonna let Matt go. It might be a half hour before we get the floor back. We're gonna let him go. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be quick. I promise. I'm gonna be quick. Okay, so the only person uh, that believes that's your wife. <laughs> now, I was gonna wear my CBSI shirt, but I couldn't find it. I'm I'm a mess today. But um, okay. Showcase 40, third metal man, okay. Mexico. It's a nice and, looking uh, uh, Mexican book. Yeah, it's very nice. Any you know, anytime you can find Silver Age stuff in Mexico that's in a decent condition, you know, you're gonna want to get it. One of the ways you can tell that it's old, you can see the see the Navarro star up there, and uh, uh, Navarro actually had a lot of DC stuff within the Marvilla run, which is Wonder Woman. Um, so I'm really stoked with that book. Um, another Mexican that I got. Whoop. Got a glare. Oh, uh, this is the flash. This is the flash two hundred three. Ooh, so this is clearly, you know, I mean, it's it's a beautiful book. Uh, older Navarros, even if they're not key, if I just like the cover and they're in decent condition, I'll pick them up. You know, uh, I dig the smiley face in the corner. Yeah, that was that was Scott. That was around. They did that for like a few months, right? I don't think they did it for too long. I've never yeah, seen it before. That was a later period, too. Yeah. They had the little smiley face. Cool book. Um, and then these these ones are just neat. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna find Israeli Hulk, Ooh. I'm yeah. gonna buy them. You know? Yeah. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna fuck around. If you if you see these are uh, from Kevin Comics, Hulk 173 and Hulk 176. If you see Hebrew stuff and it's in decent condition, buy it. Or you're just a fool. And that's beautiful coloring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, and these are these were printed in the 80s, I believe, the Kevin Comics. So um, you know, they're they're Bronze Age halts, but they were printed later, but still. Um, anytime I can pick up decent Hebrew books at a good price, I'm even afraid to tell you what I picked those up at. I think it was <laughs> I think I picked those up for like 20 bucks each. Yeah. So no brainer. There, see, see how fast that was, John? <laughs> God. Uh, Give me a hard time and shit. That's what I do here. That's what I'm here. Yeah, for. that's one of your jobs, right? It's in your job description. It's in the contract. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up. I do have some stuff from Brazil, but I'm gonna save that for later. Um I'm gonna start off with one. Robert here again hooked me up because last time I shared something he hooked me up with. Uh but he threw in a Cool book on a deal we just did. Vampire 16, which is the flip book of Ghost Rider and Werewolf by Night. Um, if you watch uh, Comic Tom just highlighted issue one, which is a, is a Marvel Spotlight 5 with Werewolf by Night 1. They did a, a run of 16. Um, and they become more original covers as they go on. And I... I don't know how the Marvel licensing department <laughs> let some of them go. The, oh, get ready. The work that bad way over is tame. Um, the I'm going to cover up the the naughty bit. Um, <laughs> but this is the Ghost Rider side. Notice the Ghost Rider in the logo. Yeah. Vampire. Wow. But uh, there's a guy who is a decapitated, chopped up woman that he is throwing into the furnace. After she drew him. After yeah. He after he hefty the nice painting of her in the corner. Yeah, that's an interesting Kate Winslet moment. Yeah, issue fifteen I didn't realize has a bit of a uh, uh, some some risque content too. It's it's got some nudity, but it's not as straight gory as this one with the leg going in the furnace. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, that's a and crazy we, book. And Thank believe you. it or not, John. And that book is was looking. It's very hard to find. There's a lot of people looking for that book, and I just realized I was like, "Hey, call me Karma, right?" Yes, you I gotta, yeah. it, Robert. Got to keep it going. I sent I sent one of the uh, number ones to our good friend Sean, uh, one of our pressers and a friend of the channel, and he he's a huge uh, Werewolf by Night Ghostwriter guy, so I'm sure he'll dig it. But yeah, this nice. is nuts. The 15 is nuts. I've, I've somehow almost acquired a whole run by accident. Most of them are really rough, but that one's nice. So. Thank you, Robert, and stoked to have it. Yeah, that's I really rad. appreciate it. And if ever there's a book to prove that the licensing department at Marvel <laughs> was just 
Handing out licenses like candy to whoever and could do whatever, that's a book that proves it right there, man. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> just nuts. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Scott, take us back to something more sane, I'm sure. Reel, reel us back in here. <laughs> um, this is not a newer book, but the signature. I'll say it's uh, recent. Oh, where'd you get that? I just yeah. like you right now. Great placement, Scott. Yeah. I had this personally signed. I met Steranko. Um, he was joking with me. He's like, hey, I don't think I got paid for this. So <laughs> if you want me to sign it, you, you're going to have to give me a little bit of extra money here. One thing about this book I'll say, it's these cap, the later cap issues uh, for La Prenza, it went up to like issue 31, I think, or 32. They're harder to find, and for some reason, some of these issues have really thin paper on the cover. Like this, you can almost see through it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's so thin; it's very hard to find these in any kind of condition. This is probably the prettiest copy I've, I've ever seen. I had noticed on some of the Spider Men that the the paper is so thin. Yeah, yeah. But Ken Worthing, he actually did the twenty one through thirty of the of that Captain America run, and he just did that on his YouTube channel not too long ago. And he showed uh -huh. that book, and I was like, man, any of those I would want because I want to get something signed by Steranko soon. I had a, I had a fury I was going to get signed right before yeah. COVID. So. Right. Yeah, this book is probably <laughs> in the, like, price-wise, you could pay anywhere from, say, if you're lucky, maybe in the 30s all the way up to 100 or more. I think, if I recall, when, when Ken bought his, it was when that big dealer in Argentina sold off his personal collection. Oh, um, yeah. For medical that. reasons. And I think Ken almost com nearly completed the whole set off of his books. But there were tremendous bid wars on these things. And, and they were pretty. They were nice it. copies. Yeah. Was his name Daniel Scott? What was his it name? It was Daniel. Daniel, yeah. yeah that, I remember when that happened. He let out. Daniel had tons of keys and just he had runs, flooded, flooded he had runs of everything. Yeah, that was beautiful, beautiful book set that guy had, man. Uh, Robert, where you got today for us? All right, I'm gonna start off by saying that you know, as far as Matt and Scott and everybody in uh, FCC and Globo, they say that community is always the one thing that keeps this niche going. You have to have people on your side, on your behalf, looking for books. So I got one of those scarce pieces of uh, books that people look for. The Philippine edition of three oh, oh, nice. nice. And uh, a 6 man. Ooh, a 6, six. That is literally like a 9-2 in yeah. the Filipino world. So, But of course, Beautiful. you know, Thank you, CGC, for spelling it P H I. Oh my God. L I P P I N O. <sighs> Don't but, count on them for accurate notes. No, they actually gave me something to send it back so they could fix this because oh, Spider Man yeah. was supposed to be here and not on Wonder Woman. So <laughs> I have to send both of those back so they can do the swap. But it's like the, the paper is definitely very thin. You can see the breakfast cereal on the back. It's still a nice copy. And, uh, I'm glad to add this to the set. I'm I'm a couple issues away from getting it. I have some stuff on this way, but I think I'm like two issues away from completing this set too. But I could just say my wallet needs to cool down a little bit. Robert, what do those staples look like? From the notes, it says it's light rust, which is not that bad. Yeah, because Filipino books, in, I mean, I had a nickel for every time I saw one with rusty staples, it'd be rich because it's hard to find them without rusty staples. But as just yeah. light rusting, that's not bad. So the other notes on it says light bends to the cover, light creasing to cover, light foxing to cover, and then light spine stress to cover, and then light staple rust. So it's all of his light. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, that's like a 9 2 in the yeah. American world for Filipino books. That's huge. That's pretty awesome, Robert. What do you got? Uh, are you going to horror finally with that name, or are you gonna are you gonna tease us again? No, no, we're gonna go <laughs> horror. So we'll, we'll show this. Nice. Yeah, this is Aventura's one thirty six. Yeah, one thirty six. Um, it's PGX. 
Um, <laughs> that is actually what the foreign seller had them slabbed as, which I thought was interesting. Was that the guy from Spain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is the guy from Spain. Um, this is <laughs> Adventures into Weird, Weird Worlds 24 right, from right. Atlas 1953. Yeah. A little, I like that. I like, cover. I like the purple on that one, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Versus so the black American was 53. This came out in 60, so okay. seven years after. But it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's they kind of yeah, yeah, they kind of tweaked it, it enough that I like it. It's nice. It's it actually looks like it might be a seven, it might be a little bit lower. I don't, I don't trust PGX, so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually usually pretty firm in that mid grade, so you're. Safer a, than most. It's in a diehard bulletproof case. So yeah, you, the yeah. zombie apocalypse comes. It ain't breaking. You can use that yeah. as, as a as a hammer a all day long. Matt, I don't. I'm afraid to give it back to you, but I'm gonna no. go ahead and do it. It's gonna be tight, guys. Nice and tight. <laughs> um, okay. So I think I've told you guys before. I don't dabble in Golden Age, Atomic Age, whatever stuff. You know, from the '60s earlier. I just because I'm kind of. You know, Not mindset. Yeah, I'm in my. I, I just I'm building sets. You know what I mean? Like, so I I love it. I think it's cool. But so the other day, you know, I have dabbled in in some foreign golden age a little bit. But I'm gonna try to start getting a little more into it, um, just because it's cool. So I have a neat one here. Oh yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful book. This is a strange number four, um, Mexican. It's. I think the American publisher was Ajax. It's not uh -huh. an. Out, it's not an outrageously uh, key book or anything specific. But what makes this book so special is or just it's colors. a black. It's a black book, and look at the condition of this book. Yeah, it's I mean, gorgeous. it is gorgeous. Wow. Nice and color. Re yeah, and the reason is because this is a Harvey file copy. Ooh. So this book did not live its life in Mexico. This book lived its life in America, in How the Harvey warehouses. I have a secret, and there, and I, he still has more, but I got, it, I got it at a really good price. And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Harvey He's file copies. Mind that the Mexicans had, had file copies. Yeah, they sent them to the American publishers. Not that the American publishers looked at them much or did anything with it, like, you know, Maybe like Harvey did. Company. Maybe Harvey did, but um, yeah. So uh, this was sitting in the warehouse here in America for a long time, and like I say all the time, you find decent conditioned Lapranzas Navarros that are golden, silver age. You're a fool if you don't buy them because you, you just don't find them very often. So this one's beautiful. I'm actually considering buying the American just to have it. The yeah. Because it'd be cool. Yeah. Um, I and then this is another one that is a Harvey file copy. This is the World of Fantasy 12 Mexican La Prenza, Cuentos de Brujas 87, and same freaking deal. File copy, beautiful. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color strike. Awesome. Love it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dipping my toes a little bit in the, the Golden Age foreign, just so that I can say I have a few and those were no brainer buys for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, nice. foreign foreign commerce. You just got to buy a little bit of everything, just because you don't know. It's it's yeah. like a it's like a journey every time you go somewhere. I mean, you yep. don't know what you're going to come back with. You don't know what you're going to buy. You don't know what you know what's going to pop up. And you're like, well, I need that yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, this uh, I'll segue into that, but uh, I I didn't even know this country published comics until. They, somebody posted on the site, and I said, I would like those. So I actually got not one, but two copies of the classic Spec Spidey 101, uh, John Bryan cover. Um, but these are from Iceland. Love that cover. Woo! Mm -hmm. Iceland had cover or comics. Beautiful, beautiful books. And some of the toughest Copper Age marvels to find would be the Icelandics. Ah, so, I mean, I, I, I dig the blue title. I mean, the cover is classic on its own and iconic. Uh, you know, minimal minimal titling, minimal, you know, there's no 
boxes at the bottom or anything. So yeah. really get yeah. to see the, the art. Yeah, it really allows it to shine. Yeah, so gorgeous, gorgeous books. Super happy to have them. And uh, yeah. And you got two. One for the collection and yeah, one for an investment yeah. property. One one for God knows when I need a need a need a favor, you know? Yeah, John, exactly. John, those a lot of those Icelandic that are high grade were all file copies. Hmm. These are pretty nice. I, I haven't actually like studied them, but they're nice. So they're not good, beat up like some of the buy. stuff. Another no brainer buy. Yeah. All right. Scott, where you got today? I'm up again. Wow, that's quick. Um, I'll keep us moving. Actually, just because <clears throat> because Josh showed us a book from the Spain seller, that guy has tons of high grade books. Mm -hmm. so I deslabbed this one a couple weeks ago because I wanted to read it. Oh but wow, beautiful! This is a uh, oh, awesome. Just little history lesson. So when La Prenza, they they when they got the hero issues rebooted in um, in in the early '60s with Marvel. Just like in America, they took and they basically repurposed the existing titles. And so the Witch's Tales converted over to the superhero material. But the thing is, they only ran these for like six, seven issues. And then they canceled these. And they didn't kick, they didn't pick the Thor material back up until the Vangadora series. So they missed like, uh, was it 26 different issues? So wow. basically, this is the last one that they did, and it's extremely hard to find. This is a ghost book, and, it, and it's high grade, Scott. Yeah, it's, well, it's yeah seven point five by wow, the standard, awesome. but it, it's a beauty. I, yeah, I look through it. No surprises, no coupon clips. <laughs> it's PGX. <laughs> I'm like terrified to crack the slab <laughs> open. Yeah, yeah, you're gambling every time you do that, but that's okay. Yeah. The book I was actually going to show you guys, because I, I love Thor, is I don't oh, know wow. if I've ever shown this one. Just because oh. it's kind of, I, I bought it because I'm trying to complete my Thor run. I'm a completist. But this mm -hmm. is an annual, and this thing is a ghost, too. It's hard to find, extremely sought after in the Latin American countries, long before any movie spec. First um, Hercules, right? Yeah, and then the cool thing is that it reprints in Spanish uh, a couple of the issues that they didn't print in the regular series. So, ah, uh, very nice. nice, great pickups. Fuck. All right, all you, Robert. I'm a little worried about this one, Robert. Uh oh, I know what's coming. <laughs> Woo! Get my eyes ready. <laughs> we tease this first, one first. I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, pull out my speech. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to go get a towel. I'm starting to get I have ready. To, you know, I'm gonna have to thank the FCC community, Matt, Scott, John Z, and all of those of all parties for getting this book. I showed it before, but now I have it graded. And for those of you that were eager to find out what the grade was, hold on to your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't believe it. Oh, God. I think we should just thank Scott on, or I'm sorry, Sean Leggett on that too. Because yes, he did master work. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to cover that because I don't want nobody trying to steal that, steal that grade, you know. <laughs> yeah, But just amazing. know that this is going to hold that place for a while. I mean, it's, it's so bright. It's beautiful, man. Let's, let's I, get a closer that's... look. Only I'm one of the you. fences. That's a ten thousand dollar book at some point in time, Robert. I don't know when. Yeah. I don't know if it's five years from now, ten years from now. But that that's a ten G book. Even Easy. though, even though that doesn't have the H and G stamp, it came from a collection of a of so the collector's mom worked for Hector Nava Garcia, and his dad had a massive collection, and he collected a lot of books, and he got a lot of the H and G books, but. The collection that that came from is historical and might yep. monumental, in my opinion. Yep, exactly. That's Ulysses collection. And when you when we were talking about that book, I mean, it was a high price at the time, but uh, well, our gut instinct was it was a no brainer if you had the funds. Oh, it's yeah, not a high no price brainer. now, even. And that was what six eight months ago. Yeah, yeah. you got a steal. 
Because I, I, I just paid it, I close to that much for not as nice a copy. Because that was last Christmas, right, Robert? Yep, just about. So that was a Christmas present from the foreign gods, <laughs> yes. Robert. So, uh, <laughs> so after this podcast, when you see it, don't hit me up. Don't ask me questions. Don't. <laughs> don't yeah, just, <laughs> then I'm left, baby. Up. I'm like, you can sit here and send me some six-figure offers. I'll probably look at you and say, hmm, that's nice. No. <laughs> NFS. That's all right. I've got I've got its its brother is heading to Sean for some work and see where it grades finally. I wasn't going to do it, but she inspired me. That was on purpose. That was on purpose, Z. On I also purpose. am sending – I'm also sending some of, some of its uh, not as pretty sisters to get graded, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, chiming back to what Joey said. He said he – just seeing that, just seeing that grade is going to make everybody try to find one to, make, oh, yeah. to try to even, you know, have a copy. Even the lower grades are still going to sell. So it's they're, they're not going to get any if I keep buying them. If I buy them all. <laughs> that's what this. That's what this. That's what this trade teaches us. We have to be on top of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. for sure. That's amazing, Robert. Are you going to see it there behind John? I mean, behind no, not John. Behind Matt. You see it behind him, right up there on the wall. Oh, did you yeah. put one up there? I didn't realize it. Yeah, you can't mistake that booty nowhere. <laughs> well, I mean, you've got the first CGC graded. I've got the first CBCS. So we've kind of got, you know, got those covered. That's a nice yeah. one too, Matt. Yeah, this one's pretty. This one's pretty nice. Um, it's not anywhere near where Rob's copy is, but I'm I'm happy with it. And I'm collecting all the low grade ones. It appears. Yeah. Well, we got to get my man Josh into that, that horror guy into this round, too. He wants one. So we got to find him one. Yeah. You know, JF was the first person to target that book, I think. Well, he was a smart man. Oh, yeah. JF is a smart man. There's no he, he was the first one to call that one out as a key. I might, yeah. I might have been in my opinion. One him. Yeah. Yeah. That big booty, you just want, like I say, you just want to grab it. You just want to reach up there and grab it. <laughs> oh, Matt. All right, <laughs> Josh, we're going to move to you before Matt loses his mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I can't follow that, so thanks for tuning in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Yeah, way more than that. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to do this guy. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, I know last show I did number six. This is number nine. Um, so cool style. Yeah, this is Baffling Mysteries, number 15. Uh, it was from Ace 1951. What an interesting cover. Yeah. yeah. It is baffling. Kind of feels yeah. Harvey Kurtz, like Harvey Kurtzman-ish to me. Yeah. yeah. Is, he, is he playing like a flute? What's yeah, I, I, think, I think he's playing, he's playing a flute or something. Wow. But yeah, I love uh, the color changes. I like, actually, I yeah. That. And then this this came out in '53, so it only came out two years after. But this was another one of the books that I got from uh, Comic Connect and that one horror auction they had. Is it the guts? Is the actually the same issue, or is it just the cover? I am not sure about that. Okay. Because I would have to break it open. <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Yeah, I've I've seen a few more foreigns popping up on some of the auction houses. Not tons, mm -hmm. but a few here and there. Oh, all right. We're going to go back to Matt, see what he's got to uh, share here. Okay. So for my final, I'm going to try to do this quicker. But um, I recently, I know you guys know I built the Angela set. So this is the Polish Angela. Uh, I got it from my guy, Peter. I don't know if any of you guys know Peter. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's, I think on the Facebook group, it's Peter M-G-O-W or something like that. But he's a great guy. I talked to him on the phone the other night uh, for quite a long time. But, yeah, so he hooked me up with this Polish. So I was very happy about that. Um, also, I don't think I've shared this one, but this is the Lopin. So it's the Swedish First Reaper. He also hooked me up with this. Very so nice. That's I was nice. pretty happy with that. 237. I'm going to start building this set. Since I have the Filipino, I might as well. Yeah, why not? Yeah, but yeah. The, the Mac Infantile is gonna be your best. Yeah, the Aranita is gonna be blowing my brains out. But I'm gonna keep looking. 
But probably for me, the most exciting pickup that I've received recently is this. This is the Weird Western 12. It is the Hopalong Cassidy, so it's the Navarro. When I picked this up, and I have to call out my buddy Cecilio. He helped me get this. You know, this is – I'm going to talk about this real quick. Like Robert said, you have to have – your contacts and your friends, and you have to have these networks in place. Otherwise, you're gonna miss shit. This book came up on Mercado Libre, Mexico, okay? Timothy Bildhauser, the man, the myth, the legend, called me and said, hey dude, you better check out this auction. Sends me the link, boom, bada, boom. Um, Mercado can be a bitch to get stuff off of, but uh, I uh, had been in a deal with Cecilio for some Fantomas comics. That's a huge stack of books. I don't have time to go through those, but I do plan on going through those on an episode of Global Comic Safari. But within those Fantomas books that I was buying, I asked Cecilio to pick this up for me, and it was cheap. It was like 35 bucks. But this was only the second copy of this issue that we had seen at the time. Okay? So thank gosh I had my peeps because I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't even have been aware that this book had hit the market. Um, since then, another one has popped up, John, that you know, you have one. Um, yeah, so I, I scored it randomly on an eBay auction. Yeah, like like a, you reminded me how, what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people aren't so into the Westerns, but I like the weird Westerns. I like all of the DC weird series. And so, um, I'm building this set and I had to have it. Then, now we're on the, we're on the topic of comic karma and friends and people right so matthew gabriel trishnell saw a video i did and i also have a norwegian now and wow. he just sent it to me for free because he, awesome. he had picked it up in a in a lot and um he saw my video and said oh shit, i got one of those and he's you know oftentimes when we buy foreign comics from overseas we buy them in lots so we just buy them in groups. So a lot might have two or three books you want, and it might have two or three that you don't. This was one that he knew uh, was semi-key, but he just was holding on to it, and he just did the Comic Karma thing and forwarded it on to me. Matthew Gabriel's Trishnell, thank you so much. All I have left now is the Swedish, and uh, my buddy Bjorn's got that coming to me, and I can say this is a very rare thing to be able to say but I think I might have the entire set after that. So I might have the whole weird Western 12 set and uh, it's not a big set and there might be more out there. Like, you know, you, you, you run that risk whenever you say I've completed it, that another one will pop up and you will have to eat grow. But you know, as far as I know, known copies, I have them all, or I should be having them all. Once Bjorn gets me the Swedish, I love this niche. What can I say guys? I'm a fucking freak. I'm a fiend. <laughs> And there'll be a Filipino that pops up. Yeah. There better not be. Everything. <laughs> well, uh, I have the Filipino, John. Oh, well, then never mind. Yeah, the Filipino's rare, and I got one. So, yeah, that that's a set I'm excited about. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this out with a couple of e balls. One up. One I'm just gonna show just because I for all of you guys that uh, have been uh, CBSI and. Uh, Flipside fans for a long time. You know, I love this book. Uh, Brave and the Bull 54, First Teen Titans. This is the, nice. uh, the ball edition. Uh, it, yeah, it is quite nice. A little bit of spine wear, but the color is gorgeous and just pops. So very happy to add this. Somehow I've apparently sold all my American ones, so this may have to inspire <laughs> me to buy another one again. Uh-oh, you're getting sick, John. Yeah, I know, I know. I sold the last one. I had an had a Eight five, I sold to buy something at some point. Probably the Spider Man. Uh, this one though, this is even a little more interesting. It's an Ebow. It's the Shazam oh, promo edition. Nice, of course. Yeah, the three hundred printed. So uh, there's a there's a standard edition, which I wish I had the label to show the difference. I didn't think that far ahead, um, but. You know, Shazam number one for 73. This one's interesting uh, because not exactly sure how he got it, but the gentleman that sold it to me, it's going to be hard to see. On the back inside here is a, uh, behind the monitor is a, a um, flyer that talks about the book. It's like laminated paper and it's meant for autographs. So the other side says autographs. And this is just talking about the book. 
Uh, my Spanish is piss poor, but it's talking about it's how it's limited 300 and some of the facts about the book. And so it, it's truly a promo book with all the promo material with it. So that's Portuguese, John. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's definitely why I can't. <laughs> Wonder my Spanish okay. is for shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you flew into Brazil. You parachuted into Brazil, John. You should know this, man. This wasn't actually from that seller. This was from another one. <laughs> this one actually came through uh, Canada. So, but it is a beautiful, beautiful copy of a very cool book. I'm a I'm a yeah. big Shazam guy, Captain Marvel. It's white so. cover. It's clean. Yeah, very clean. So, and that uh, and that insert, John, is very rare. I know a few other people that have one of those, and they don't oh, have do. the insert. Well, okay. I think I know two other people, and they don't. I don't think they have it with the insert. I think I think Josh is getting one. I ha I have one with the insert. You it's got the big, insert too? Yeah, uh, it's a big deal. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it's I was wondering. You, you were it was coming. I didn't know. Mine, 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 my insert's not as nice, but yeah, I have. Oh yeah. And then, uh, yeah, mine's mine's like ew up here. Okay. But, but yeah. that makes it more authentic. Well, yeah, this is this is the back side. Yeah, that's the outer so, side. Yeah, one side's got all the promo info, and one was for like autographs. If I assume that, the yeah. creative team or something, I don't know. Well, yeah, how many people I went and actually used it for autographs? I bet you a bunch of them used them what the, for what they were used for. They probably went and got autographs at that little uh, Brazilian convention that that showed at. I mean, I don't a give little. a shit if it or I don't know how yes. was it big. Oh, have you have you seen Kazi show videos of oh, uh, yeah. conventions? Yeah, they're they're Dude. like bigger than anything in the U.S. They're yeah, big. they're nuts. My mind was blown. <laughs> like yeah. boxes for miles. Huh. But I'm thinking back in the mid mid seventies, that might not have been a real big thing. I, I don't know. Oh, I'm just, yeah, who knows? I'm just assuming that a ton of those collectors that got those promo copies used the damn autograph sheet for what it was for. The fact you have them blank is super cool. Yeah, yeah, because I have I have two of those, and only the one has the uh, the insert. The, the other insert. one didn't come with one. So, so I, I, my gut is though that the, that it's you know only three hundred. Probably a lot of the three hundred do exist still because it was a promo book mm -hmm. and was probably thought of as special pretty right away. Correctable. Yeah, so I I don't think that there's you know not a bunch of them around, but I try you know finding a bunch of them, and even if there are, there's only three hundred. So that's. That's pretty yeah. freaking crazy for a Bronze Age type book. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, great scores. All right. Nice. Any uh, anybody got anything else to show? Or are we are we done? I wasn't sure with Matt. He cut a pile this morning. <laughs> well, I can grab my Fantomas if you guys want to Fantomas nerd out yeah, real could, quick. You want, you want me to show those? I can real quick. Sure, if you got them quick, I'll I'll show one to distract while they're here. I uh, I actually let go of a uh, an Italian three hundred just because. Well, I could, and uh, traded it for. I guess it looks like the start of another set. I got uh, some hobgoblins. I don't know why I got the hobgoblins. But I was like with Spider Man for Spider Man. So the arena. I got the Italian. I like the yellow on that one. Got the German. Very close to the original. And I picked up the uh, um, French Canadian. Dang, Ooh. you got a lot of those quick. Yeah. Well, it's all for one trade. I also got a gambit in the deal. So nice. That might start to become tough. That Which gambit, one? Uh, the gambit yeah, on a brew. A nice one. I've the one I found happened to be in a lot I got from somebody and from Fabio in Brazil. And I haven't seen one in a while. I think it was one on eBay, but that got sold by the time I got to it. But yeah. other than that, that one, some of those are are really, really tough to find. They might be drying up. Yeah. It's all, it's all ebbs and flows. Okay, guys. Fantomas. Who is he? Fantomas is, a, is a, basically a, a Mexican superhero. Um, but he was he was created in Italy, so the long story short is Fantomas was around. He was a real evil dude in Italy. He goes to Mexico and he becomes a culture warrior. That's it in a nutshell. Huh. And they're they're very cool books. Pre I've been pretty looking cool. at some covers online. There's beautiful ones. Yeah, there's some really pretty ones. And the art the art kind of 
goes all over the place. You know, like it 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 has there's some good girl kind of art styles in it. Then you'll end up with stuff that's more like this. It's more like photorealistic kind of uh, you know, almost like almost like graphical art. You know, like posterish type. I love this one. This one's just super cool with his cape. Um, they're just he's just a really cool superhero. Um, and so I've been kind of branching out into more Fantoma stuff. I like it's that one. Yeah, this one's cool with, with, with the, the Reaper or uh, Death up there. This one's kind of interesting. It's got Charlie Chapman in there. Hmm. Hmm. So they're just, you know, they're just fun. And I want I want to research more on, you know. I'm, hey, you I'm can gonna, pick them up cheap, too. Yeah, they're not real expensive. Some of the older ones are harder to find. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get a first Fantomas in Mexico. It was yeah. in a Tesoro. Um, I just got to wait to get the money I need to get it. This one's kind of cool. And, of course, being, you know, the Mexicans didn't care. That wouldn't have passed a Comics Code Authority. Um, but that's another really cool cover. <laughs> but I got to thank Cecilio. Um, and, you know, I got to – I want to mention this, too. Cecilio is a, a, a good friend of FCC. He's a part of FCC in Mexico. And he, he survived COVID. So, you know, I don't think we've talked really about anyone that's dealt with the greater – situation that's going on in the world within our community but you know thank the heavens he he survived and um he's on the mend and i just want to uh put that out there from the fcc community and group that uh we're very thankful that cecilio is on the mend because it was a little scary there for a bit yeah we all need to stay safe man it's a, yeah it's, a goal. it's not just here so yeah it's everywhere it's all over the world uh oh uh, I see Robert. Robert pulled one more out. Just we'll give him. Oh no! Oh, so Robert's craze. Is that the Panini? Yep. And you can see it got a little gloss to Miles on the front. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's glossy. I see a lot of people looking for that book all of a sudden. Yeah, this is the thicker version. You can see the thickness of it. Yeah. Is that a two issue one, or is that like a trade full? It's all. It's all four. Okay. It's all four issues, and the fourth one has the Miles picture in it. Is there a, is that the only way it came was the trade size, or did it come in individuals? It was one, but it has the black banner across the top. Okay. But that one, that one's tough to find. I'm still tracking that down. But as far as Miles go, I definitely have – that story is definitely in here. Let's see if I can find it real quick. It's, it has him revealing himself in the beginning. I know I'm ragging on. Well, it has the, the advertisement for the next one in the back. Mm, but it's that's cool. Uh, Miles is hot. Very mm. hot. Oh, there it is. Found it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice. Nice. Hey, we, we collect everything here. Not, not just new, not just old. A little bit yeah. of everything. Yeah. yeah. It's something from every decade, at least – a dozen countries, if not more. Right. So, thank you all for coming on, sharing your collections. Uh, you know, if you guys are viewers are interested in sharing your pickups, let us know. We'll try and get some guests on and, and show us what your your big book is, or you know, leave a comment. Let us know what you want to see. And uh, I think that'd be cool. Do a show where we just invite people that have never been on to show their one exactly. of their grails. I like that idea, John. That's a good idea. Hit this up. Leave some comments, leave some likes, share it, and uh, share the love, share the comic karma. And uh, thank you again, CBSI Comic Book Invest. And thank you guys for uh, joining again. We have content on every night of the week on the channel. Foreign's Vintage Voyage, which is uh, Golden Age. We've got Moderns. we got everything. So check it out. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you again next week.